Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine, and we are going to continue talking about the quantum mechanical model of the atom. So this is part three of quantum mechanical model, and we're going to talk about electrons in orbitals. And we're specifically going to talk about how we diagram where the electrons are for an atom. So remember when we talked about orbitals and we talked about the quantum numbers, we have energy levels numbered one through seven. That's the principal number that each principal level has the same number of sublevels as the number that it's in. So one has one, two has two. We know that the sublevels are named S, P, D, F, G, H, and I, and we know that they layer in, and we know that the S has only one orbital, P has three, D has five, and so on. So when we're mapping out what the electrons look like, it's, uh, it's convenient to use a piece of paper and to do it in a two-dimensional fashion rather than drawing S and P and D orbitals. And so we use a two-dimensional method of using paper and drawing lines to represent energy levels and the sublevels, the orbitals, and we fill them according to a set of rules. The first rule being the Aufbau principle, and that states that electrons enter the lowest energy orbitals first. And the Aufbau principle, which comes from the German word Aufbau, which means to build up or construction, um, it shows the way they actually fill in. So we're able to measure these things and we know the way the electrons actually fill in and they always fill in from lowest energy to highest. So the next slide is going to show an order in which electrons fill into orbitals. And this is sometimes called the Madelung rule diagram, uh, but it's following the Aufbau principle. So what you see here is principal levels one through seven, and then the order that they fill can be found by using these arrows. So 1s, and then 2s, and then 2p fills, and then 3s, and then 3p and 4s. Notice that the 3p fills in and then the 4s fills in. So the 3d does not come in till after the 4s. So it would be nice if electrons filled in in numerical order. Unfortunately, they don't. They fill in according to this diagram. So what is this Madelung diagram? The Madelung rule is a rule that relates to the Aufbau principle, and it results in the electron filling diagram that I just show you, which showed you, which is the order in which they actually fill according to energy. And it states that atomic subshells are filled in order of increasing values of n plus l, where l is the angular momentum quantum number. And remember, l corresponds to the type of sublevel, whether it's an s, p, d, or f. So some books show it with the 1 at the top and the 7 at the bottom. However you slice it, though, it always is the same thing. 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s. So notice that the 4s fills before the 3d. That means that the 4s is lower in energy than the 3d. So again, this is just the order that they fill in, and it helps you in mapping out your diagram showing the electrons for different types of atoms. So the second thing we have to take into account is the Pauli exclusion principle, which states that an orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons and that they must have opposite spins. So the spin quantum number you remember was plus a half and minus a half, but for a two-dimensional representation it's either easier to show the spin of the electron as either an arrow pointing up or an arrow pointing down, corresponding to plus a half and minus a half. And that is Pauli, and he uh, was awarded a Nobel Prize for his uh, research on this matter. Um, I think his was in 1945. And then continuing along, there's one more rule that we have to follow when we're filling in these diagrams, and that is Hund's rule, which states that when orbitals have equal energy, 
one electron will go into each orbital before any are filled with second electrons. So remember, each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. But when you're talking about a P sublevel or a D sublevel, you have multiple orbitals that have the same energy. So what happens is they're kind of like kids and bedrooms. Um, if you have kids and you have enough bedrooms, they each want their own bedroom before you start pairing them up. So in that matter, electrons can be thought of like children who all want their own room and are not going to share a room unless they have to. So let's see what that looks like uh, with P and D orbitals. So here are my three P's and here are my five D's. So when we're filling in electrons, let's say I had three electrons to fill into the P sublevel, I would have to put them in like this. So I couldn't put two here and one here. I have to put one in each orbital with a parallel spin before I could start pairing them up. And again, think of them as children who want their own bedroom until they're forced. And again, the Ds are the same. So in order to fill them in, you have to make sure that each orbital has an electron before you're allowed to put two in the same orbital. So according to Hun's rule, they'll only pair up uh, and enter an occupied orbital when each orbital at that energy level contains an electron. So showing you for the P sublevel, the first, the second, the third electron, and then the fourth electron with opposite spin, the fifth electron, and the sixth. And for our D sublevel, first electron, second, third, fourth, and fifth. And now, since every bedroom has an electron, now they're forced to pair up. So seven, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten would go in looking like that. So when we're doing these diagrams to show where the electrons are, we have to follow these three rules. The first is the Aufbau principle, starting at the lowest energy and working up. The Pauli exclusion principle tells us that the maximum number of electrons I can put in an orbital is two. And if they're in the same orbital, they have to have opposite spins. I show that with an arrow pointing up and an arrow pointing down. And Hun's rule governs um, sublevels that have more than one orbital, uh, and that's P and higher, so P, D, F, G, H, and I. And there are exceptions to these rules, and I will do a separate um, tutorial for that. Um, and generally speaking, those exceptions occur at specific locations in the periodic table, and the ones that we'll talk about are chromium, copper, and molybdenum. So to summarize, when you're doing electron configurations, we follow the three rules, Aufbau, Pauli, and Hund, and we have three ways that we can show or represent those configurations. The first, most complex, is the orbital notation where we'll actually draw an orbital diagram and show each individual electron as an arrow. So for helium, we would put in two electrons and it would look like that. The second method is a shorthand, and it's called electron configuration notation, and that is a one-line notation. So I would summarize the orbital notation by writing that the 1s level has two electrons in it. So here we use a superscript or an exponent to show the number of electrons. And the third way is the noble gas notation, and that is a further shorthand uh, to make it easy, and this is the way it appears in our periodic tables. So for sodium here, it would be shown as neon and then 3s1. So for now, this is Ms. Augustine signing off.